In this video, I'll go through the physical part of the setup, and later I'll go through the software parts. Firstly, we'll start with the SM48 dynamic microphone. Good for working on stage, minimal bleed uh, from unwanted sources. And this is routed to uh, this TC Helicon, a reverb pedal. It adds just a bit of room to the microphone, which can be nice for the for the sound I record from the microphone uh, onto the cassette in here. Um, and also it works like kind of a bridge to the dance sound here. I don't know the exact sign as to why, but for some reason the microphone doesn't really function very well when plugged directly into the dance sound. Not the, the mic input or the the aux input. Uh, I found the aux input gives the best results. This works like kind of a bridge. I'm not sure how, if it works like an amplifier, which this can better uh, record. If you know why that might be, be sure to comment in the comment section. Anyway, this is the Dun Sound Educational AV30 virus speed. And this is where the, the magic ha happens, so to speak. We have the standard play function, record function, and stop function. Those are the ones we are gonna use today. Then we've got the counter up here. If we press play, maybe just put in a... There we go. And turn it off, on of course. You can see the counter here uh, counts up. Which can be really nice uh, if you've got a something you have to time. So, otherwise we've got the vary speed uh, knob here. It's a bit skewed. It's an old machine, <laughs> so this is about the correct tone. So if we've, if we got a middle C, then the middle C would be here, and then we've got a one and a half tone to the left and to the right. Just about one and a half tone. Again, it's an old machine, so. Then we've got the, the tape volume here, and this can be quite sensitive, so be careful with that if you get your own. Your microphone or aux input volume, so the recording volume. We've got treble, and we've got bass. So these are things I can play with, the same with very speed. Treble, however, is, um, since it's an old machine, it's more noise than anything, so that's why it's mostly put at zero to lessen the the noise of the music but the bass can be nice to perhaps play around with this is then routed to my h6 uh, handy recorder i'm not sure oh, you can see it there i've got uh, quite a bit of input so that's why i'm using that one the zoom recorder can function as a sound card just like my scarlet but it's got more inputs uh, I've got the small Scarlet 2i2, so this is uh, this is quite handy uh, for getting more inputs. Then we've got my MIDI mix. I've set this up to control what happens in Ableton, but I will show you that uh, in the software part. Otherwise, we've got a lovely nose flute as an instrument I use to record onto my tape loop. Oh, that's this one. It's about uh, six and a half seconds, thereabout. And the same with my kalimba. So I would put my cassette in, press record, and then record through my microphone into this, and then quickly uh, get out of recording into play, and then use these knobs to record the the music with otherwise i've got a uh, just a cassette with noise and yeah over here if it is possible to see i have my two open cassette tape loops which play some drones in the piece of music i'm gonna show you yeah, otherwise that's it for the physical part, the gear part of uh, my setup. And now I'll go to, over to the, the software part. I'll see you there. And welcome to the software part. I'm working in Ableton, and this is my small setup. 
with only six channels that are fairly self-explanatory. We've got noise, we've got birds noise one and two, kalimba and drone one and two. The group only has a limiter. Since working with old and not that well maintained gear, it's good to be on the safe side. But everything besides a stereo whitener I like are Ableton stock effects. So if you want to try out the setup and have Ableton, that's quite easy. The stereo whitener, however, could be substituted by the Ableton utility effects. I'll show you that later. Here we see Ableton's looper, where I recorded the noise into. And the most important bits here are the X bars, record X bars, then play. This means that you have one bar you can record on, two bars, three bars, or X bars, which means unlimited, which is quite nice. There's also the play button down here, which I've mapped to a button on my MIDI mix. So I can control the play, or firstly the record, the play and the overdub, if I wanted to do that. On that note, monitor input here, I've also mapped to a button, so I can choose when I want some sound coming in, and then just toggle it off. Both the monitor input and my looper here are identical, the setup for the buttons on my MIDI mix for all of the channels here. On this channel, I also have a Shimmer Reverb, which is a, a audio effect rack made by techmechmusic.com. It's quite nice and I like it. It's just some, well, shimmery reverb. I can recommend it, definitely. Then we have a spectral resonator for some harmony, mapped to a knob together with a shifter that turns down the sound an octave for some more low end. And I've got an additional shifter, turning it down two octaves. Then I have a bit of EQ, just to control the low end a little bit, and my auto filter, which is mapped to my slider on the MIDI mix. This goes for all the channels as well. Next are Bird Noise 1 and 2. And the setup is identical for the channels, so I'll just go over one of them. This time the looper is set to 5 bars, so I record 5 bars, and then it automatically goes into play, instead of overdub. I myself can control whether I want to play or overdub when it suits me, with a button on my MIDI mix. Then the shifters, same deal with a couple of octaves, one octave down, two octaves down, and one up for some more high end. These have also been delayed, as you can see here, so the delayed pitched sound comes in at one second, 0.05, and so forth. Quite a handy little device. We have a bit of compression, an EQ, and then the auto filter. There is also a limiter here in the end. Uh, you just have to be careful with how many limiters you put on, since, as you can see, I hover over the device, and down in the left corner you can see on the orange bar, latency, 128 samples, 2.7 microseconds. So that's how much it gets pushed. So in an ambient work such as the performance I'm gonna do, it's not that big of a deal, but if you want something tight, be careful with the limiters. Then comes the kalimba setup. It's the same as the bird noise. Then we have drone one and two, more or less the same setup as the bird noises, except for a bit of Shema reverb. The stereo tool is one I enjoy, this one. However, you could use the utility of Ableton. There we go. So we've got mono and stereo width. So you can play around with that. It sounds it sounds fine. Otherwise we've got a couple of sends, just some basic reverb and delay. And then we have the master, which is mapped to my MIDI mix as well. So I can 
fades in and out with the master. And that's it for this video. A small and flexible setup, easy to just put in more channels if you'd want to expand. The most important things are mapped to my Minimix, one channel per fader. What I mean with that is three knobs, two buttons and the fader itself on the Minimix. The Minimix have eight channels and then the master fader. So a lot of options for progression and expansions of the setup. If there's any questions, please throw them down in the comment section. And thank you for watching and the time has finally come for the performance. I hope you enjoy the piece and perhaps get inspired to mess around with cassettes with me. Thank you.